Okay, shall we start? Come in. Um, hi, I'm Mark Villard. Um, I currently work for Red Hat, and they actually pay me to hack on System Tab, which is fun. Um, some of you may know me from uh, some of my Java work, and if you th were thinking, oh, Mark is going to talk about Java, that's going to be a bit disappointing. There will be uh, one example at the end using system tab with Java, but uh, all the rest is uh, boring, old school languages. Um, The talk itself is um, in two parts. One about system tab itself, why do we need it, what can it do, uh, some examples. Uh, and the second part is, well, also about system tab, but <laughs> um, what we need besides system tab to make it really useful. Um, uh, and what, what, what you could do with your programs uh, to make system tap and observability on GNU Linux uh, better. Um, and then there will also be a little demonstration of, uh, indeed, with Java, how you make something like a Java runtime uh, more observable with system tap. Well, it's not really a circle, but <laughs> kind of a circle. So why do we want to have something uh, like system tab? If you are looking at what your system is doing, there, there are uh, a lot of nice tools. You, you can do profiling with just the top to see what's running on your system uh, using OProfile or the new perf tool. Um, uh, you can use some tracing tools, uh, S-Trace to uh, trace your system calls, um, uh, L-Trace for library tracing, the new F-Trace tool to uh, trace uh, kernel uh, function calls. And of course, if you then have figured out what is going on, you can drop in to the debugger and uh, really inspect what is going on. Kind of the, the, the problem is that these are all separate tools. Um, and um, uh, profiling tools often work system-wide, while tracing tools work one application at a time. Uh, and with debugging, you often just stop your program to inspect what's going on. Um, and with system tab, we, we wanted uh, all the advantages of these programs without any of the disadvantages. Of course, that also means with system tab you give up some uh, things you can do with the other tools. But um, we, we hope that with system tab you have at least one tool that keeps you going for a while without having to switch between uh, these things. So, um, uh, the tracing tools. What's nice about tracing tools is you can see what's happening while things are running. Uh, it's, it's, it's often uh, faster and nicer than, than printf debugging uh, uh, because it's fully automatic, uh, printf debugging. Uh, you get a quick overview of your code flow, um, but the limitations are there of the specialized tools. You, you, you either can trace system calls, or you can trace uh, uh, function calls, or you can trace the kernel. Uh, and there's often limited filtering, which means that you quickly get too much information 
and when you try to grab it out and your system is really busy, you might actually end up changing the system you're observing. With profiling, the nice thing is that uh, it also runs uh, while your system is running. Um, and uh, it, it, it gives sample, uh, uh, it, it samples, and that means you get uh, statistics about what is going on. Um, and uh, you often can see system-wide what is going on, wh whether it's in a library, in your kernel, uh, in your program. Um, but it is often uh, limited to time sampling, and it would be nice if we could sample every interesting event. And often it's a large data dump, you profile for a while, and then you have all this data, which you then analyze after the fact. Although there are really nice after the fact analyzers for the various profiling tools. And um, with deb debugging, we have uh, the full context of what we're observing. Uh, often you can access the variables, the per parameters of the functions. You can look in memory, um, registers, you can get a backtrace. Um, uh, you even have conditional breakpoints, so you could actually run a program and only stop it if some context uh, uh, is interesting. Um, the limitation is, again, it, it stops the program under inspection, which is nice if you want to sit down and look what's really going on, but it's not so nice if uh, a problem only occurs on your production system and uh, people are actually using that system and you would rather just look at what is going on and not stop uh, a server. And uh, with debugging, again, it's one program at a time, not, not system-wide. So, with system tab, um, we kind of made a mix. <laughs> it is an obtrusive, hmm, difficult word, uh, uh, non-stop, so um, uh, you can look at your system, but you don't halt your system or uh, allow it to uh, hold up your system uh, too long. Uh, it should be system-wide. Uh, you can monitor multiple events, uh, both synchronous, um, uh, uh, this happens now, a, a function call to enter a function call is exited, and asynchronous uh, based on time. And um, it is scriptable, so you, you can do in-place filtering, so you don't have to filter after the fact. And uh, you can collect statistics in place. Um, it's not super powerful, but powerful <laughs> enough. Um, uh, and um, uh, what we wanted was to make all this safe. So enforce that it is non-stop and obtrusive, doesn't use too much memory. Um, uh, system tab will allow you to monitor things and then uh, if it, it notices uh, your monitoring takes too long, it uh, let the system run. Uh, you can override that, but by default, uh, you're not allowed to uh, do anything dangerous, uh, use too much memory, use too much time, uh, that kind of stuff. So, how does it look? Um, it's, it's a pretty simple uh, setup. Basically, you have a, a, a probe, you probe an event, and you have a handler for that event. And that event can be 
uh, something like uh, a, fu a, a, a function entry, uh, for example, in the kernel, um, uh, uh, or it could be a specific statement in a process that get passed, or uh, it could be a timer that triggers um, the begin and end of a script is an event. Uh, uh, we did that so in the begin event you can set something up and in the end event you can create a report from all the statistics you collected. Um, and uh, there's this idea of aliases. So you can alias um, multiple interesting events as if it is one. There will be an example of that. And a handler can do uh, simple filtering on, on, on some conditionals uh, in the context of the probe, and then it can immediately say, oh, don't do that, uh, I'm done. Uh, and there are simple control, control structures uh, for each is for the, uh, you have associate arrays and statistical uh, variables, and you can loop over those, of course. Uh, there are limits that see, oh, uh, uh, it, it, it did too many steps. Uh, uh, it, it, it is um, uh, limiting uh, the, pro, uh, the, uh, the whole system too much. Um, and, and, and that is kind of the default. We, we, we always want uh, that uh, there's no notice noticeable impact uh, on the system unless you explicitly specify, yes, I want to use megabytes of memory uh, and I know what I'm doing. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, and there are three kinds of variables. So you have primitives, numbers, strings, you have associative arrays and statistical aggregates where you, uh, uh, where you can store uh, uh, values and you can get the, the count, uh, the sum, the average, the maximum, the minimum out of it. Uh, and of course there are some helper functions uh, for actually logging something, printing, uh, getting the time, uh, what is the current process, that kind of stuff. Um, well, I show some examples. The, this is the simplest uh, you invoke system tab as step. Either you give a script on the command line uh, or you have uh, a script in a file uh, and you can uh, specify a target process uh, if you want. Uh, which actually means while this process is running, this, step, uh, this script should run. And to see what kinds of events there are, you have the step minus L list and you can give it uh, um, uh, uh, a pattern of events you want to see. And if you use minus capital L, you actually get all the context variables also. So I'll show some examples. Um, I wanted to do it without any tricks and just have Fedora 12 uh, installed. Uh, and Fedora 12 is, is really nice because uh, for a couple of contexts uh, uh, it really helps to have debug info available and the latest Fedora has a backport of the variable tracking uh, assignment patches for the next GCC so the debug info uh, is really nice. Uh, it has system tab nicely integrated, it has the latest kernel. Um, uh, I had to do some tricks. <laughs> so I, I did install all debug info beforehand, um, uh, because otherwise it would be a bit long. Uh, uh, system tab will tell you if it needs specific debug info files. Uh, so I did that. Um, I added myself to the stop dev group um, so I can actually, uh, that means I've elevated privileges so I can actually see everything. Uh, 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 th there are a couple of 
uh, 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 different groups you can put users in so they can only u uh, use uh, some scripts and there is a unprivileged mode in which you can only inspect your your own programs um, and uh, I actually installed the Python and Java uh, packages from the rawhide version because the version in uh, Fedora 12 uh, didn't have all the probes that I wanted to show. Uh, I believe the Java package is actually going to be updated and next week it will be in Fedora 12. So, let's see. Oh, help. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so to show um, that you can do some simple tracing, you can pro probe a process, spin ls, um, show me all functions, um, and just uh, lock the probe point uh, where you place the probe. Uh, and then we actually run it over pin ls. Oh, man. Functions. Okay. Function. Right. Yeah, sorry. The resolution is a bit... Um, but what you can see is that it actually uh, 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 put, uh, put probes on all the, the functions. This is actually a function from uh, an included file. Um, and nice thing is this is also how you can actually specify the probe points. So you can also uh, specify them uh, uh, as they would be found in the source files. And it can do that because the debug info files have all the knowledge of how the source, uh, uh, the binary maps back to the source files. Um, and to show you can also have some, uh, let's only print the, pro the probe function and show bits well, uh, parameters param I actually wrote this out. How do you? Mm. Okay, sorry. Right. So here you see that again in a hugely big thing. Uh, some, sometimes it, it, it cannot find all the context. So for example, here the print color indicator doesn't actually know what the parameters are, but for, for most uh, um, uh, for most functions, it can actually see uh, what arguments were uh, given. Uh, to 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 actually show a bit that you can also format it nicely because this is just. Uh, too much output. Here, here we actually use a, uh, uh, we probe each function uh, call, and then we, uh, uh, we print out, uh, uh, we, we indent, uh, uh, we, we add a bit of indent to uh, the current thread, uh, 
and on each return we decrease the indent and we show uh, uh, arrows if we're going into a function or come back. I if, we, if we probe and trace in this way, um, you can actually see, ha, huh, now I can show you that it's also system-wide because I forgot to actually give it a target process, but I can actually run ls here. Ha! And it, it saw the ls running on my system. Uh, the, the thread indent function also uh, prints the number of milliseconds, the process name, uh, and the thread ID. Um, and here, here you can see that, well, you can use uh, system tap as a uh, fancy uh, L-trace, but you can actually nicely format and filter uh, all the results. Um, and, no, let's skip that one for a minute, because we're running out. Um, uh, this is all process based, but you can also uh, uh, trace on uh, probe. Cisco open. Show all the files that are being opened on the system at this time. So here we are doing system wiped uh, probing. We, we probe, whoa, okay. Um, you can see that GNOME settings is opening proc mounts a lot and hmm. And Sentinel opens proc load efforts every second. Hmm, interesting. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, um, what did I want to say? Oh, I, I, I just wanted to show that you can do system-wide uh, uh, tracing and get output. Uh, the problem here, of course, is you get quickly too much output uh, uh, who's really doing something. Um, Um, we screen is a bit small, but the idea of this script is that you have some globals, which are actually associate arrays, uh, and for every uh, virtual file system read and virtual file system write, you uh, for each executable you add uh, the count. Uh, of what they were reading and writing. And then you see a timer-based probe, which we actually don't use as a probe, but now as uh, uh, outputting uh, all the data we collected. So we go through the names in the writes and in, uh, through the names in the reads. Uh, 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 we create uh, totals and then we print everything and then we clean up. And, oh yeah, five seconds. <laughs> so, yeah, luckily uh, uh, the thing happened, what I wanted to show is that even now, but this is a very quiet system, you already see that by outputting all this, uh, you can already have step IO uh, be on top of what you're tracing. Um, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to help a bit with um, um, uh, with, with that kind of anomalies, you, you can also use, uh, um, oh.
statistic, statistical uh, variables where you um, every time put in uh, the next number in. What it will actually do if, since we don't actually um, print out this global uh, step will actually uh, 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 run this program and when we quit it, I hope, yes. It actually prints out for everything it monitors, uh, the clock applet, uh, it did uh, two reads, uh, the uh, minimum read of a thousand bytes, the maximum is the, the same, uh, the sum, of course, then 2,000 on average, it did a read of 1,000 bytes. Okay. So, um, what I showed is with, with SystemTap, you can do fancy scripting of all these events, at least. Uh, uh, but, uh, we, 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 uh, we need something to, uh, uh, to observe. And uh, for that, we need uh, events that we want to observe and we need to have some context. Um, and uh, most of what I showed was very low level. And I think we, we nicely covered the low level stuff. Uh, you can have timers, you can uh, uh, monitor processes, signals, function calls, you can uh, uh, monitor in the kernel, uh, and uh, we're working on uh, uh, data watches that you can actually watch uh, data being changed, and we hope to have uh, events for the performance counters in newer CPUs. Uh, and especially for, for C, C++ based programs, the debug info is pretty good these days. Uh, so uh, GCC provides us a lot of context. Uh, the, the trick is a bit to get all these techniques also used by other tools. <laughs> uh, we actually hope that all the tracing profiling debugging tools also use some of what we're using because then you get more people hacking on more of these low-level events. But what we really would like is more high-level events. Um, so we, we, we have two, uh, two systems for that. So uh, you can write tab sets. That's basically the aliases. So uh, we have a tab set for the virtual file system and it defines uh, probes and uh, it aliases those to the correct uh, kernel functions and it knows which arguments contain what and then sets up the context for you. Um, and th that's, that's really nice, but uh, what we would really like is um, that kind of context, not that we code through the kernel or a program or something you want to observe and then somebody goes through all the source code. And, but we would like them in the source code <laughs> uh, where the developers write their code and they say, this might be an interesting uh, point to observe. Th this is an event and here's some context for an event that uh, uh, might be, be interesting if you want to know what my program is doing. And this is uh, where you can help. I mean, you, you write programs, so. <laughs> um, in, in the kernel, we're, we're making nice progress. There are actually two solutions. <laughs> well, the, uh, to, to be honest, the, the kernel markers are being uh, deprecated and the trace points uh, uh, are the new uh, way to do it. Uh, system tab can observe them both. Uh, and of course, there, there are a lot of tab sets already for uh, the kernel. Um, for user space, um, uh, we are trying to do a trick. Um, 
there's D-Trace, which is kind of similar in spirit to system tab. Unfortunately, it's not really suitable for GNU Linux systems. And, well, that's basically just because the license is completely incompatible and, oh well. But they had a great idea. They have user static dynamic probes, which is uh, macros which you put in your program to indicate here is something interesting. Actually, we had the same idea and we did it slightly different and then we thought, well, that this is actually not nice because then we make people choose do you support D-Trace or do you support system tab. So we're actually discouraging people from using the step probe indicators and uh, encourage people to put D-Trace probe macros in their source code. And uh, the implementation is completely different, but uh, if you compile your program on a Slayer system, uh, it will uh, make those events visible to D-Trace. And if you compile on a uh, GNU Linux system, SysTab will see them. And we even provide a fake D-Trace script that uh, kind of does the same things uh, in, uh, in your build. So uh, there, there are actually a couple of programs uh, like Postgres uh, which already have those. And uh, if you configure with enable D-Trace, those pro points get put in and you can see them uh, uh, true system tab. Um, the, the, wh where should you put your pro points? W what are interesting events? Uh, and most of the times that is when you would add a verbose flag and say, uh, this is happening now. In those cases, it's, it's often nice to also have a, uh, a, a static pro point there um, uh, because uh, with, a, with a verbose fl flag or if, if you use logging, you are controlling what the user sees. And often they know better. <laughs> they, uh, uh, they know they want to uh, see uh, something in one run or on the whole system and they only need uh, some context. Um, one, one interesting thing was uh, when we implemented system tab itself. Um, so of course we have minus V and it's, uh, it parses the scripts and it compiles the scripts and so it has a couple of passes. And, uh, I was actually adding uh, the, the verbose output. Um, oh, I actually want to know how much memory this is using. Oh, I print out the memory uh, and, uh, and the timings. And then suddenly it was, oh, wait, but, but I have a better tool for this. Um, because if you have these pro points, then uh, 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 we actually provide functions like uh, 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 the, uh, the memory the process is using uh, at that time or the time a task uh, spent. And um, uh, we actually provide the actual values, not just the strings, so people don't have to parse out your minus verbose uh, output. And what was it, uh, funny was that um, um, we added probes to each pass, so you can uh, uh, see stop uh, start phase one, the, uh, the compile phase, um, and you can see it end that phase, and you can uh, see it uh, start and uh, stop uh, the parsing phase. And what is interesting is that now we can actually run this verbose output um, system-wide, we just run uh, our test suit and because we have aggregates, uh, uh, we have statistics, 
you can actually run the test suit, have a little script, monitor all the, uh, the stop passes, and then say, uh, uh, on average, pass three takes the most memory. And uh, 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 the argument at that time was this particular script. Um, am I going too fast? Well, no. I'm on time. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going a little too fast. But that just means you get to ask more questions. <laughs> um, so, uh, another way to, to uh, use this is to make things that aren't C or C++ or the kernel or uh, like scripting languages uh, or uh, a language runtime uh, more visible. Um, so, for Actually, now I have time for a little story. It was kind of interesting because um, uh, we, we really wanted these D-trace probes to be completely compatible. Uh, so people could just put those probes in their uh, programs, and D-trace would see it, and system tab would see it, and the whole world would be happy. What was funny was that uh, then we tried to see how Python was instrumented. And one of the uh, sad things is that D-Trace is actually forked in a uh, Apple macOS version of D-Trace and a Sun, now Oracle, I guess, or uh, a Solaris D-Trace. And neither of them actually submitted their pro points upstream. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> We actually tried very hard to to be compatible, and now we might actually submit our version <laughs> upstream, and then they still look slightly different. It's it's not a big difference, but uh, uh, the the argument order and the precise pro point names are different on macOS and on Slars, which is kind of silly. Anyway. The, the, the nice thing um, uh, uh, in, in the Python case was that it was already kind of done. We just had to pick either the Solaris or the Apple version. And indeed, when you compile uh, Python this way, uh, you, you get a couple of probes, but the function entry and the function return are the most interesting ones. And again, we do some thread indenting to show the flow. Uh, and the argument names are not that nice, but I believe argument two is the function name, argument one is the file name, and argument three is the source line. Yeah, that must be it. Well, we, we can just run it. Ah, I forgot that again, but that doesn't really matter. I didn't even do anything in Python yet. Um, <laughs> but as you can see, uh, uh, now you can actually see inside your Python program. You can actually see um, uh, what functions uh, are entered when, where, where they were defined in the, in the source code. Um, and um, uh, so, so, so um, one thing we don't have for Python, but we do have for for Java, uh, is uh, backtraces. That's sometimes a bit more work. Uh, but uh, th this means that you can now kind of instrument and look into your Python program as if it was a normal C program. Well, at least according to uh, system tab. Um, 
I, I probably should show that we can do the same with uh, Java programs now. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, uh, Java was also nice because, uh, uh, at least in the in the case of Hotspot, which was the Sun VM, which is now under the GPL, uh, they actually spent a lot of time to instrument all the interesting parts. So um, uh, it, it, you, you, you can now see when your Java program starts a garbage collect, or when it loads a class, or when it unloads a class loader. Um, and the, the nice thing in that case is that you can also combine it with uh, uh, your other probe. So you can uh, uh, see, hey, there, uh, uh, when was uh, uh, some swapping out of memory going on in the kernel, does that correspond to my garbage collections? Um, um, and the, the nice thing uh, is that maybe I just do one example. Um, So in this case, for example, what, what's nice is that um, since uh, SystemTap can look through the whole stack, you uh, can get a, 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 an interesting uh, an interesting backtrace where you actually see uh, so what I actually did was um, uh, when the GNI uh, Java native interface get argument length is uh, called give me a full uh, backtrace of this point. And what you can see is that it can not only show Java uh, 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 functions, method calls, uh, but it also knows whether it's jitted. Well, this was just a hello world program, so probably nothing is compiled, but it knows whether it is interpreted. Uh, it can see some parts of the, uh, everything is interpreted. That's not fun. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, it could see some of the uh, uh, compiler work, the actual hotspot methods, uh, like it, it, at the start, where you can see uh, uh, the setup till you actually hit your Java main program. Okay. So we take some questions. Wait, I must at least give you these two URLs. Um, all my examples were a bit simple because I didn't have that much time to explain everything, but there's a really nice uh, examples page and there is a beginner's guide which explains a lot about the examples. Uh, and there's also a wiki where uh, you can learn how to precisely put user space probes in your application. Yes. Can we use this or? Uh, yeah, can you tell us a bit more about um, the performance impact of um, uh, doing a system tap on uh, kernel calls, syscalls? So um, we, 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 we try to keep, keep uh, uh, the overhead re really uh, low. I'm not sure what our thresholds precisely are, but um, uh, every probe is is executed in place, so there are no contact switches. Uh, 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 and in principle, all the logging is just dumped in a buffer, which is read later. Uh, so uh, the the impact is pretty small for most things.
Hello. Is there the ability to define a priority in terms of uh, repartition of resources between the monitoring activity and the production activity? Uh, so, sorry. Um, is there the ability, if, if you take the example of SNMP protocol, SNMP protocol on routers and things like this is always defined as the lowest priority. And is there the ability to uh, define a priority in terms of uh, uh, the right execution of the things on, on, a, uh, on a system and the monitoring activity? I, I haven't really thought about that. SNMP is, 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 is uh, that was what you were asking, SNMP. It's, uh, well, it's, it's a higher level thing. This is much more lower <laughs> level. Any thoughts on using system tap to determine memory usage of kernel modules? So, go. Why is the, what's this kernel module using? Why is it chewing up that much memory? Um, you 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 can partly do that. Uh, there are actually trace points on KMalloc, for example. So you could trace that and uh, uh, look at the color of KMalloc and map it to uh, a module. Um, I'm not sure there might be something like that in the examples. Probably not precisely for modules, but uh, th there is something for how much KMalloc is called from where. Uh, how much of the debug info is system tap understanding? For example, how can it print a struct? Yes. Um, it, uh, um, uh, you, you can... System tap sees the uh, the uh, the debug info for the struct, and you can actually dereference and get the fields of uh, a struct. Um, maybe uh, it's a, a little bit of a silly question, but would it be possible to implement this for Windows? I don't know, <laughs> because Windows has, of course, uh, a lot of tracing um, possibilities. And it's always nice to have similar interfaces. Yeah. Um, let's say it has been 10 years since I used Windows, so I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Um, is there a library? Is there a library with a programmatic interface to it? So, for example, could Python? Um, look at the result. Look at the profiling information of its own probes and expose that within Python. Uh, no. Uh, is that being to, considered, to, or is that interesting? Well, m m maybe something like that could be done. I believe Ruby has something like that. But has there been any discussion of adding anything like that? No, no not yet. To, to be honest, that was one trick. Uh, the Python support was uh, oh, not necessarily kind of Python, done. but it, is there an in? Hi. Is there any um, specific support for um, monitoring multiple systems and looking at relationships between what different machines are doing and and, and how they're causing faults on each other and that kind of thing? So, sorry. I didn't completely understand. Uh, you mean uh, monitoring uh, other systems than the current running one? Yeah, or monitoring, monitoring distributed systems running on multiple machines, yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we have a, a client server set up. Um, so you, you could kind of spawn scripts on other machines. Um, but it's not that much worked out yet. <laughs> 